Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is take two because something was screwed up. But anyway, welcome back to the 42 Podcast, <laughs> where as always, we're talking about the failings of the late, great human race. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm awesome, J-Hope. How are you? Oh, I've got... It's been... A... Anyone who has listened to this podcast knows it's been a hard year for Jacob. Yeah, you're kind of crazy, man. And this week has not been any exception. So me and my wife were out you know, having, having a l early dinner and, mm -hmm. you know, my mom or my wife sex, my mom trying to figure out who we have in our like secret Santa that we have, because my family's really big. I have five brothers, you know, and now there's two sister-in-laws in there. So there's a lot of people get gifts for. So we just draw names. And my Is mom, it above 20? Sorry. To interrupt well, you. no, it's just in the kid. So it's right now it's eight. And we'll soon be nine. So eventually, maybe it'll be 12. Uh, Damn. Yeah. But, you know, this way I don't have to buy a gift for all of my brothers. And no one's feelings get hurt, you know. Right. And so we're... we're oh, at, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. So, it's way more financial. Yeah. Everybody yeah, gets it, one cool gift. Right. And, you know, this instead way instead of, like, of spending... Because you, yeah, you could spend $300, $400 if you buy all of them like a $20, you know, $40 gift or whatever. Right, which isn't even that great anymore nowadays. No, so we're so we're trying to figure it out, and we, I have a screw up brother that I don't know. Me, every family to, hands one. Everyone has one. So we're and so my mom's like, I haven't heard from him in a while, and that always puts off the radar. It, <laughs> no, he is such a screw up. That I have a Google alert that has his name with dead beside it, like legit. <laughs> You can do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can You're set up any phrase on a Google alert. And if, if Google finds it, it'll send you an email and send you the link. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. It's very, very handy for stuff. So if you're looking for st like particular stories or like certain keywords, yeah, it's really useful. Anyway, so I, I put, you know, pull out my phone. I'm like, oh, crap. So I punch it in and I was uh, just punched in his name in our hometown. Right. And, and then the second... Google was the felony arrest reports in my hometown newspaper. Oh, and no. There's his name. And I'm like, oh, shit. Please don't oh, be him. No. And I kept reading. I was like, there's my old address. Damn it. So two counts of second degree felony burglary and one count of felony meth possession. Wow. I mean, it takes... You know, if you're gonna commit one crime, only do one at a time. You one know? at a time. Uh, so, so he gets arrested on. Well, he does. He broke into these two restaurants on Thanksgiving night, which I guess is a smart time to do it. You know, no one's gonna be there. And then he was arrested on the second. He bonded out yesterday morning, and then married the girl he's living with. Because you know that's what you do right before you go to jail. As you do. As you do, you know, and it's like if depending on how things go, it's six years. Wow. And granted, luckily it's his first time, but like meth possession in Oklahoma is two to life, depending. Wow. Yeah, they don't fuck around in Oklahoma with meth, man. It's nuts. No, they don't. No, they don't. So, yeah, it's been a, Wah. like, I, we found about the whole getting married thing today, and I'm, just, I'm just sitting there in my cube at work, like, trying not to laugh my ass off. I'm like, welcome to Maury Povich, everybody. We've hit Maury status. <laughs> so, what are you going to buy him? Like, commissary points? <laughs> well, I didn't get his name in the, in the. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh, well, whose names did you get? I got my littlest brother. He's 13 now. So Ooh. I'm thinking about getting them because uh, some of the, the drones on Amazon have gotten really cheap. They're marked down from like $200, like 40 So I'm thinking about getting one of those. Like, awesome. Mm -hmm. I like, thought... We should talk off air. I'm okay. into drones. Yeah, just one oh. of the little ones, you know, just let them fly around and have a little camera on it and shit. Awesome. Yeah, 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 yeah. Those are awesome. It's like training them for the jobs of the future. What are you hoping to get? 
<laughs> I don't know. At, th at this point in the year, I'm just like, I'm just watching my watch and watching it click down to 2016. I'm like, come on, come on, come on, 2015's been a shitty year. Come on, get over. <laughs> uh, you know. I mean, here, here. Is here, it, here. It's one of those things where, you know, as long as it's funny or kind of cool, I really don't care. Like, if it's a cool t-shirt or whatever. Because you know, all the stuff I really want I can't afford neither, much less my siblings or my parents, you know? Yeah. Well, what I did like for my parents, because my mom wanted a Christmas list. So, um, have you seen like automatic or Venly? No, they're, um, they're basically to turn your car into a smart car. So you like, you plug them into your, uh, OBD two port. Yes. And they have apps and it'll, so if your your engine starts throwing a code, it'll automatically tell you what the code is. And since it knows what your car is, it'll tell you what it is, not just what the code is, but common things that cause problems with it. It tracks your mileage and, you know, it'll go over maps and tell you more efficient ways to like get to and from work and all that kind of stuff. The, that sounds cool, Jake. Yeah, the automatic is like 90 bucks. It's so, not bad. The Vinley is 150 and the big difference with the Vinley is it comes with a T-Mobile SIM card. So you can activate the why, why the uh, 4G. So it creates a mobile hotspot. Which, you know, if I had kids, totally Maybe. do it. Yeah. Th throw them in the back with an iPad and say, put in your headphones and shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you You'd know. make a great dad. I know. <laughs> But yeah, so that's that's what we're doing, and I'm just tired. I'm so tired. Why is that? I just it's just been everything's been happening, and it's been oh, emotionally. Yeah, well, and that takes a toll on you physically and everything else. I'm just like I, I don't, I just don't want this to happen anymore. Yeah. So so in the week in a week because remember last week I told you about I learned my friend died so in yes. a week I learned that my friend dies my little brother gets I learned that my little brother gets arrested and is facing serious jail time and he also gets married to another I mean uh, my wife managed to dig up some pictures I mean you could tell that meth is a hell of a drug she went from kind of plump very fair skin to pretty thin and pretty nasty skin in like 18 months. Like, wow. Real bad. Yeah. It's like, Ooh, meth is a hell of a drug. Don't ever do meth kids. Don't ever That's do. They meth. say, don't ever do it. If you're going to do it, do the clean version. Do, um, Adderall. Yeah. Cause you know, meth has like Drano in it. Do you, do you want to go drink some liquid plumber? Cause that's basically what you're doing. If you're doing meth, don't do it kiddos. Please. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the dirtiest drugs. Oof. So Oof. yeah, it's even weird to talk about that stuff. It's like, ah. Uh, you remember? You remember him? He was, he was like three yeah. feet tall, four feet tall when you knew him. You know? No. It's really weird. It's really he weird. He was the age my son is now. Yeah. Yeah. Uh, so anyway, not to open on another downer like last week, but apparently that's just all Jacob does anymore. Yeah, got, we're just in that mode. Like I've got, I've got to the point where it's it's laugh to keep from crying. It's just like pff, whatever. Well, sorry to hear that, Jake. No, yeah, well. Anyway, so how are you doing, man? I'm all right. Uh, I got stuff going on. I don't really want to talk about it on the podcast, but it's the kind of stuff that makes it where you don't sleep at night. Hmm. I'm just hoping it works out. It's just like, oh, I'll know Friday. But um, I've been having weird dreams and stuff because of it. I've been, I've been having weird like, you know, if you don't really get to good sleep, you're kind of like going in and out. Like mm -hmm. you kind of, you wake up and you're up, but you fall back asleep like your body does before your mind does, and you'll get left in those weird like, they're half lucid dreams. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. there's a part of you that kind of knows you're dreaming and the dreams aren't as real as like a normal dream is they're not as like solid and it's just like a, you get left in those like kind of weird limbo states where it's just real confusing and it'll just be copies and like geometric shapes of like the, the last thought you have you know and if you're obsessing about something it's just 
Uh, and then they translate because you slip further into the dream, but you become less lucid, so the dreams become more weird. And oh, I had some weird dreams last night, man. But then I don't really remember them all real well. It's just like you wake up with this feeling of like, ooh. Just unsettled. I don't want to go back to bed. Yeah, I feel you there. But you're tired, you know? Yeah, that's me most nights. Me yeah, most I'm, nights. I'm really full of anxiety right now. I don't know, dude. It's weird. It's weird. But I've also got some good news on the horizon. Might be getting a new place to live soon. So Nice. With good internet, which will be nice. Which will be nice. With a yard so the kids can play and stuff. Nice. Well, you want to talk about something happy? Yeah, Maybe let's, happy, let's, depending on how you look at it. Let's... Samurai Jack is coming back. <laughs> part of me really loves this and part of me really hates it. Because I'm like, what if they screw it up? There's a part of me that's like, did it not end? Did he not beat a coup in the end? I can't remember. And it's like, I don't actually remember. Did I watch the end of Samurai Jack? I think it And just now with this ended. realization, revelation, I don't actually think I watched it all the way through. It's like, hmm, I think I need to find those online and actually watch all the episodes because I don't remember how it ends. Because I think I'd be disappointed if that he didn't beat a coup before it ended. But I think it's one of those things where they just like ran out of funding. Yeah, I think they got canceled. Which is a bummer because well, it was, awesome it was always on at weird times, like two o'clock in the morning on a Sunday. It was a little too artsy, you know. It wasn't mainstream enough. It was a little, but that's the things that make them cult classics. Like it has some of the greatest right. like cartoon episodes. No, ever. no hard lines. That's what I like about it. Like there are no outlines to any of the characters. So it just that's why it flows so well. And I like how they like the director like slash like producer like when he uh, had other people do episodes. Mm-hmm. Like one of the only things he told him is I want it as crazy as you can make it. <laughs> just insanity is, you know, cool. And um the one episode with the three blind mice. Have you seen that episode? Oh, that's a great the, one. With mm-hmm. the blind ar- archers. The one with the Scotsman's cool. great. Um, <laughs> on the bridge yeah 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 oh interesting lucasfilm recruited the director for the clone wars animated show which i've been told is amazing i've been told is amazing like a lot of people that i know thinks that think if that's i had wonderful. known that i probably would have actually watched it right because you know, this is the same guy that did um uh like uh dexter's lab and you know a lot uh, of those other i didn't know that oh yeah he uh he did a lot of those early cartoon network hanna barbera uh shows jindy tartoscofi okay. i like it say it again uh it's say it slower jake tarta obvious Ofsky, Ofsky. There we go. Tartosky. Okay, now don't mess it up in a little sex. <laughs> <laughs> I just can't do it. I can't do it. So let's see. He was an artist on Batman the Animated Series. This makes sense. Uh, Space Ghost, Coast to Coast. Dexter's <laughs> Lab, director of Powerpuff Girls. Writer, uh, Samurai wow. Jack. Grim. Like I said, he did a lot of those. Uh, the Grim Adventures of Billy and Mandy. Billy and Mandy, yo, that's that's a hilarious show. That's another one of those sort of, you know, samurai around the same time as Samurai Jack, and it's about this little boy and girl whose best friend is the Grim Reaper. Okay, it's and um, not for kids. No, it's 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 pretty funny. Okay. Uh, also, I can I, I can get you those Samurai Jacks. Just we can we can talk about that later. Hell uh, yeah. Cause I, I know where they'll show up. You just put them there. <laughs> anyway. So what was your favorite, like, if you could pick, like, one cartoon? Like, let's just, like, not, like, n- from when you were young. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Huh. Huh. Well, from when I, like, my the first cartoon that I can really remember being into was the, uh, now, this isn't my favorite, but I'm just kind of trying to put them in order and stack them because I haven't really thought about it. But um, 
when I was a child, uh, Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles. That was the first cartoon that I was really, really into. <sighs> Animated or cartoon? They're the same. Not really. Well, as a kid, I didn't watch many cartoons as a kid, actually. I was stuck watching, like, PBS. So I'd have to say, like, a kid show would be, like, Wishbone. Wishbone. I loved that show as a kid. That was a great <laughs> show as a kid. But that was because I wasn't allowed to watch a lot of the cartoons. My yeah. mom was. She yeah, that, yeah. I wasn't allowed to it watch was the devil. It was the devil. My favorite animated series ever? I have several. I uh, can't really give you my favorite. But um, Fist of the North Star, the old 80s, like early 90s animation, which is a, a Japanese anime. But it's done in that old classic. Three frames 90s. a minute. Oh, it's so sexy. And it's, you know, it's back from a time when we had Rambo and, you know, Arnold Schwarzenegger was in his prime. There was just something about the men could be men and the women could be women. You know what I mean? In like this overly stereotypical way. And your protagonist, the badass that walks around, like says like four words an episode and just kicks ass. In this like super post apocalyptic world, I don't know. I just love that show. Um, I liked Initial D. Initial I really D. love that yeah, show. That's a good one. What's your favorite cartoon? You had a little bit more experience. Uh, I mean, like if I'm gonna pick one up and watch it, it's Batman the Animated Series. Oh, yeah. That was really, really good. It was really, really good. Um, Batman Forever was great, too, though. If you want to get into... Um, oh, I remember as a kid. I loved X-Men. Oh, X-Men, the 90s you X-Men. My, no, yeah, no. you jogged my memory. If you want to go more like kid, you know, more kiddie, because okay. Batman the Animated Series was for kids, but definitely was not a kiddie cartoon. Uh, it was like 11, 12-year-old kids. Yeah, yeah. Which I was watching at clip. eight, you know, <laughs> whatever. Yeah, whatever. <laughs> no wonder I'm a weird child. Um, <laughs> I'd have to go with like Darkwing Duck. Oh, yeah, Darkwing Duck. Love Darkwing Duck. What about Tailspin? Oh, I mean, you've, it's hard. I, I mean, forgot those about are, those. They're so good. Uh, I mean, I'm even Duck Tales was also great. I'm even Ooh, wearing a, uh, a Rescue Ranger shirt right now. Oh, yeah, that's a good show, too. Yeah. So I don't know. There was a lot of those I forgot about. Mm-hmm. I love Tailspin because I love Baloo. And then I always thought the kid that had, remember he had that little croissant looking thing that he would like surf behind the yeah. airplane with? Like how badass did you, I mean how, <laughs> yeah. how bad did you want that? I know, right? It's like I want to, it's, it's where I go cloud surfing. And his girlfriend lived behind a waterfall in like one of the most kick-ass 90s apartment style you could imagine. <laughs> uh, yeah, that was a cool world. For a while, like every birthday and Christmas, I was just giving my littlest brother DVD sets of like Tailspin and Rescue Rangers and Dark, you know, Darkwing and stuff like that. I was like, here, you don't have any good cartoons right now. <laughs> yeah. Speaking of good cartoons right now, have you watched any of that Rick and Morty? No, I haven't. Oh, it, my God. Is it really that good? Yeah. Yeah, it's like South Park good. It <sighs> really is that good but you need to have be uh, two good bourbons in <laughs> like make yourself a couple good drinks because you're gonna really need to be a couple you know it's one of those that you're gonna because there's a lot of stuff in there that your first reaction is like ooh, you know like that's a sensitive subject oh that's a <clears throat> crazy thing it's yeah no it's it's hilarious in like that um really smart like bill burr kind of way Mm, right right where he's like um uh, his joke about people with allergies to nuts he's like you know i know it's not right to think these things and there's all these things that i have in my head that i shouldn't think but i i think them anyway you know he's like so i have this you know these two categories i have the one the one category that's like of course of course we do this. That makes absolute sense. It's 100%. We all agree. There's no even question or thought otherwise. But on the other hand, I still have these thoughts, right? So he goes, you know, it's like with allergies and nuts. He goes, the idea is that 
of course, people have allergies, you know, to nuts. And because of that, people should take extra precautions when it comes to, you know, signs and nuts are in this cookie and all of that stuff. And people, you know, uh, food establishments should go through all of these extra steps and regulations to make sure that nuts don't touch other substances and, you know, their restaurant and people don't die from nut allergies. He goes, of course, that's what we all agree on. And that's what we, you know, that's the right thing. But on the other hand, <laughs> there's a part of me that thinks if you're allergic to nuts, if you touch a nut and you die, it's probably what should happen. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's just like, oh, why did I tell that joke? What were we talking about? <laughs> Rick and Morty? Oh, it's that kind of jokes. Uh, those kind of like, but on the other hand, it's, you know, those really kind of. That's not really funny, but it's kind of funny. Yeah, those. <laughs> you don't want to watch it with, around anybody that you're not really comfortable with. Fair enough. You don't want them judging you for laughing. <laughs> but you'll laugh your ass off. It's like this season's quality of uh, South Park. You know how like this season's only had like one episode that wasn't that good? Uh, this season's actually pretty solid. To yeah, the whole season's been kick-ass. But there's like one episode that's a little weak compared to the rest. That's how Rick and Morty is. Like, every episode is like, oh, my God. Mm, they have to check it out. <sighs> okay. You have it? Anyway, yeah. you're not in the podcast. Get out of here. <laughs> Shut up. Yeah, we, uh, we, we've been watching The Flash. And I got to give those writers credit because we're into the second season. And they're just going for it. They're pulling out multiverses, time travel. They're just pulling all the crazy shit out from the DC universe. I'm like, yes, do it. Is this Netflix? No, it's a uh, CW. You can get the first season. The first season doesn't have a lot of it. It has some time travel in it. But the second season is when things just go batshit crazy. Like portals between second earth and, you know, multiple flashes <laughs> I was like, yes, I mean, it can be a pretty cheesy show. It's a pretty cheesy superhero show, but I got to give them credit. Not a lot of shows have the guts to do that. Yeah, that is gutsy. Do they pull it off then? Yeah, it works. They explain it just enough to where you're like, oh, yeah, this makes sense. You know, they Not don't really. go like too crazy, <laughs> but you're just like, well, they they don't explain to you why the wormholes connect they're just like yeah well or, or how mechanically they connect they're just like oh but see there's a wormhole here and a wormhole here and now so we can go they, between them you know and now they connect <laughs> they connect yeah it's just you're like oh okay oh, that makes sense you know there's a bunch of equations on the board and there's like yeah you know right here <laughs> and the magic happens i need you to explain this little part better <laughs> <laughs> yeah exactly <laughs> Um, yeah, I've really been in, enjoying that one. I didn't think I would. I was like, ah, oh, I'll just, I'll, I'll give it a try, you know. Did you hear that Netflix is going to increase their, um, uh, how much percentage was it? Like 150% or 200% more like self-made TV shows next season? Yeah. It's, or next year? I think, I think it's doubling. Yeah. Yeah. It must be really driving. Increase. It must be really driving revenue if they're dumping that much money into it. That or something else, you know, never know. Somebody could be just with a real to total ego trip, got a little bit of money and blowing through it. I mean, Hard to tell. The guy, the, the CEO of Netflix has made very few poor decisions, all things considered. So I don't think unless, and they're so into data, like data-driven analysis and everything, because that's why yeah. they did like one original show, just one. And and it blew up, and then they did the second one, and it blew up too. It, what was the first? Uh, House of Cards. Well, no. The Orange Grove. is the New Black, right? No, House of Cards is before Orange is the New Black. No. Yes. yes. Okay. Um, but also, some of those... But they've also had some failures. Some of them haven't gone well, but they're also... I mean, they won't be... Some of them won't be 100% Netflix. Like Jessica Jones and Daredevil is partnering with Marvel. They're getting two more, maybe three more Marvel shows. So some of them will be like partnerships with like people like Marvel to create Netflix, you know, Netflix only shows. Huh. That is interesting then. Mm -hmm. So I'm telling you, man, Disney will buy Netflix. 
That's my bold prediction for 2016. Oh, can you give me um? If that's the case, what's the number? Do you think? How much? How much cash does Disney have to throw around? Um, Disney's the big company, right? Like nobody owns Disney. Right, Disney's the top level. It's like the very top. Like that's it, right? Disney right. owns ABC. Disney owns ESPN. ESPN. Uh, Disney owns Amazon or something weird. Like they own everything. Fifty-three billion. Uh, Netflix is worth fifty-three. Well, market cap doesn't mean that's what it's worth, but market cap of fifty-three billion. If you had to buy all of the market share, if everybody would sell their shares to you, what they're worth right now, it's worth fifty-three billion. Right. If you didn't increase the price by trying to buy them all up, that is. Right. And Disney is $188 billion. Let's see. Really? How can Netflix be so close to it? Well, that's market cap. You know, there's a different... Market cap is what the shares are valued at. But, mm -hmm. you know, that doesn't necessarily include all the value. Just what the share. Oh, are that's not. It's not like we, Disney's net net worth or anything. Right. Uh, you would think they own some intellectual properties near. Well, just think of the property they own. Think of how <laughs> hundreds of acres that they own. Thousands. Yeah, thousands. Thousands. It's like thirteen square miles or something, right? Mm -hmm. It's huge. It's only like a like a small percentage has even been used for parks yet. Yeah. Oh yeah. It's. Yeah. See, cash from operating activities, ten point nine billion last year. God, that seems really low. Only bringing in eleven billion. That doesn't seem right. Who? Netflix? No. Disney. Disney. That's a big number. In yeah. one year. It just doesn't seem right. <laughs> it it so seems low. It seems that's a, low. That's a big number. Uh, here you go. Property, plant, plant and equipment. Uh, they value they value their total assets at eighty eight billion dollars. Just their like everything they own is worth eighty eight billion. That's how much it would cost you to buy the physical property of Disney. Wow. It'd be cool to be Bill Gates and just be like, give me that bitch. <laughs> they wouldn't sell it at that anyway, though. Oh, God, no. No. Yeah, that's crazy. So anyway, what do you think that would, what will happen to the uh, stock park, the stock prices of said companies? Uh, How can we make money off this, Jake? Well, if you think I'm right. Oh, and we're not a financial advisor right. at all. If you think right? I'm right, <laughs> you buy Netflix stock. Is that how that works? Yeah, because they will, they will have to buy it at a premium. Um, the thing the, here, here's my rationale behind this. You just make some. You make some. I mean, well, profit's profit, right? I mean, profit's profit. Um, so back in like 2012, Disney signed a deal with Netflix that all Disney shows and movies would be on Netflix. And it's something like within 120 or 100, like I think within 120 days of that movie be leaving the theater, it will be on Netflix. So say it again. What does Netflix get? All of Disney? All of Disney. All of Disney. Yeah. If you notice, there's a shit ton of Disney on Netflix yeah, now. Yeah, but none of, the good, none of the good ones. A lot of the classics are starting to show up. Yeah, but you don't get like The Lion King or The Aladdin or... Beauty and the Beast or, yes. you know, like the really great classics. Mm -hmm. But you're about to get Star Wars. What? Yeah. What? Star Wars will be on Netflix soon. Are they ever going to release an unedited version, like a theater classic? They has to be able to make some money off that sometime. Oh, they would make... I, I've got... I would buy it right now. I would not be surprised if, like, this week they were to announce it. Really? Yeah. No one's going to make an announcement. You just like, just dump it in the stores and just create a frenzy for Christmas. Because I'd buy happen. it. I'd buy it. Man. 
and unedited where Han shoots first and there's no stupid song. In Have a, you seen the, uh, that fan the, project where he yeah, took all the, the super, sources and created the original? Or as best he super, could create the original? It's weird. I had copies of it. You know, like you go back and... I have, Damn a, it. I have a copy of it. The original? On VHS. Nice. I, I, th- I found it at like a Goodwill. Like I pulled it, I checked the date, and I saw when the other ones were released, and it was before. It's like, it's a come home, Jacob. It's $2. I, bought, I had the DVDs. I had the unedited DVDs. Nice. Before, you know, like one of the few DVD sets they released. It was like a full set. Whatever. That's a shame that he did that. What do you think? You think this one's going to be good? I hope so. God. The thing is, it doesn't even have to. It doesn't even have to be great. It just needs just to be good. Just, just be don't good. Suck. Yeah. yeah. I mean, I actually was reading this article today about how Disney has been cutting back on advertising, which seems weird because it's everywhere. But we're actually spending significantly less because the internet is hyping so hard. It doesn't have to. It just simply like it's, what are we gonna? We're not gonna generate any more hype, right? And yeah, I like I've already told people like I'm peak hype. Like I've, I've I went from like looking at everything to nothing. Like no more no more theories, nothing. It's been the hard only, to avoid. So I watched the very first one where they have the X wings diving in and they show you the wreck thing and the thing going across. She's riding the right. you know like that, and that's like all they gave you. You know, and then like the guy at the end with the sword, and then the internet blew up about the weird sword design, uh-huh. and that was all we got. And I was like, "Ooh, right." So I was like, I didn't want to get hyped because you remember how bad we got stung like last time. It's like, oh, uh, okay, I, all right. So I'm not gonna get super hyped. The last one I saw one. was the the just the first theatrical trailer, like we see like the Star Destroyer wrecked and yes, yes, and then the the part where the the ties and then there's part where the X wings go down near the water, <laughs> but it's just a short little cut, yeah. right? It's not it's not like the long cut they have now, and um, then she's riding across the desert, and then he's like in the trees right, in winter, uh-huh. and he open he turns the sword on, and then it ends. Remember, it was real short; it wasn't that long. It just showed you a couple like click, 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 click. Well, I watched that one, and then I watched the one where they were like, you were worried that we were going to use CGI or whatever. You were worried that we were going to do all this. And it's like, well, we didn't. Or, or I don't remember exactly what the tagline was, but they have they brought back, like, puppets yeah, and miniatures. Uh-huh. And they've got explosions, like, and they've, you know, they spent, it's like back to the original way they did the first Star Wars. They're trying really hard to kind of be true to the first one and are fourth however you want to look at the yeah however you want to look at it the original anyway, right the originals and um that's when i was it <laughs> i was like oh y'all are trying to do it right like even if you're just lying to me i'm in and mark hamill said he was said it was good mark's like you know mark hamill was like yeah i like this one i think it's gonna be great and it's like you've never lied to me on anything else <laughs> ever like you're a true nerd you know so oh yeah so he says that, and then I saw the first trailer, which was enough, right? Right. And then um, when they showed you the one where it's, it's like a three-minute trailer where they're showing you the backstage, and they're kind of like showing you different stuff, and I was like, oh, oh. oh see, I haven't watched any of that. I, I'm in. No, it's not – they don't give any away. You I, know, know how, I know, but you know how, like, like it feels like – it feels like a kid. Uh, Christmas is coming, right? So you're just like, okay, you're super excited, but you just gotta, you gotta push it down so you can maintain till Christmas. And that's how it is. I've, I've pushed it down. You gotta pretend. You gotta pretend, right? Right. Well, what's really cool too is the theater we go to. You know, it's got full service bar and restaurant, and so we've been um, in the assigned seating, which is awesome. Yeah. But, so we and we we have we've been saving up all these food vouchers we got like 30 bucks worth of free food so we're gonna go and like pig out before the movie and get some beers and stuff and then go watch star wars that is exciting it's very exciting. i'm so jealous that's gonna be so much fun for y'all <laughs> and what's funny is there's they only have like two or three i mean like two or three that have uh the assigned seating and so for Jurassic World, Hunger Games, and Star Wars all be sitting in the exact same seats for all three. You've got your spot, Jake. I got my spot. 
Well, it's like the last of the good seats. So when I actually get around to getting tickets, there's one of the few left. Like, you know, pick them up. <laughs> awesome. Well, that's something to look forward to. Yeah. So does that come? We what? we'll do our podcast right before then, huh? Uh, well, yeah. I'm seeing it on Sunday, so I'll be pretty fresh for the. Well, I don't know. If, I don't know if we want to podcast on the 22nd or not but no or the week after that we're gonna skip those two weeks okay then yeah we'll we'll be podcasting uh, a little, little less than a little more than 48 hours before it launches because it's launching at like seven o'clock on thursday or whatever stupid right i've already Man, seen how much money are they gonna make i could i it's it, it should it should break the jurassic world records why wouldn't it? I'm, I think you're looking at a five. I think you're looking at a five hundred million dollar domestic opening weekend. It could hit a B worldwide <laughs> in the first weekend. It really could. Because <laughs> uh, some theaters aren't shutting down. They've they have sold out theaters at two o'clock in the morning. Did you know that uh, Star Wars bought out every IMAX? There will not be a single IMAX screen in the entire domestic uh, nation that will not be showing Star Wars on that opening day. I'm not surprised. I Every mean, single IMAX. Even, though it's, even those big 70 millimeters that there's only like five in the whole country yeah. playing Star Wars mas- bastards. That's hype. epic, man. Nerd, the nerd, nerd, nerd is hype, man. Just, that is... <sighs> oh, I hope it's good. I'm so excited. Yeah, me too. Oh, me too. Cannot wait. Uh, so you got got anything good like planned for Christmas or just like hanging out with the family and stuff? Family? You know me. I have I have never not been at my grandmother's house for Christmas. That must be nice. <laughs> so, I'm yeah. Gonna, I'm going to be up here all alone. <laughs> I'm sorry, Jacob. It's all right. Well, you can I walk was, around your house naked, though. Yeah. I can't do that. Yeah, we uh, we're like we we're talking, kind of talking about gifts for each other. I'm like, you know what? Let's just find one of the nice restaurants that's open on Christmas, and let's go have a really good dinner. Ooh, like a really good one. Right, like what we would spend on gifts. Let's go spend it on dinner. Like a two hundred, two hundred fifty dollars. Yeah, 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 like, yeah, yeah. It yeah, looks like, like Perry's a, or something, right? Uh, uh, Morton's is open. Ooh, you know. son, get a reservation soon. Yeah, I'm going to. It get a reservation. Is, you know, like I said, the things I really want or could really use, I can't even afford. So we might as well. What would just, they be though? That's just one of them. Really want? Yeah, just. Yeah, I really want to get the like. I really want to start getting the smart locks. For my house, those aren't too bad. Yeah, but they're a couple. You know, I mean, I can yeah. afford them. I just don't want yeah. to afford them right now. I don't know. I don't know. Oh yeah, yeah. But like, I want a nine eighty Ti, even though I just got a nine seventy, and I like this computer, and I've only got a ten K monitor. I mean, a ten eighty P monitor. I want the nine eighty Ti. I, want so bad. <laughs> I hate the fact that there's like, I can play Fallout Four on Ultra, every single thing, on Ultra except one. Damn it! I'd really like to be able to turn that whole thing all the way to fucking max. You know what I mean? Like, like the whole thing. Now I know, like, even people with like 980s, like you have to have a 980 Ti, but it's like still. I wish I had the 980 Ti then. <laughs> I saw somebody build a workstation on Reddit. Yeah. It's a has a motherboard that can run two processors. Oh wow! So two two i sevens. So two of the new Skylake i7s with 164 gigs of RAM and a, a 980 Ti. But that motherboard will take four 980 Ti's and an SL, SLI configuration. You could run four 980s. That'll run a 12K resolution screen at 144 uh, <laughs> frames a second. At that, like, at that point, it's because you can. There's no other reason to do it besides I was bored. And I had the money. <laughs> I got some cash. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Where it's difficult to even like test it. Yeah, there's no, almost a way to test it if it's that yeah. good. 
Unless you're, well, you're like, hey, let's see what happens. If, can we run a 500? Can we run an IMAX on this? <laughs> like an IMAX yeah. size display. Well, they use it for um, 3D rendering yeah, and uh, modeling and such things. Yeah. But they don't actually use 980s. Like they put like um, Zoltan or some weird like cards. Like cards specifically designed for this engineering mm -hmm. task of like rendering. They're actually not that great for I mean, they do gaming fine. Right, but, but they're, they're not designed for games. They're designed for compiling yeah. yeah yeah uh did you see that uh pixar is looking at its first ever flop which is the good dinosaur i don't even know yeah hmm. my kid went and saw it yeah and my wife she said it was awesome and he said he cried <laughs> so i was like okay so well so it's a pixar movie <laughs> yeah right <laughs> I, I think it's just bad timing i mean come on they release it they release it just in the middle of everything and they didn't have that much real marketing behind it you know no and no, it's no. not that far removed from inside out and hunger games has just come out and star wars is coming out and you know everyone's got fatigue <laughs> That's true. I didn't even know about it. My kid went and saw it, so they somehow knew about it, though. But they have one of those grandmothers who likes to take them to the movies. So yeah. she, you know, looks like what came out this week kind of thing. Right, right. Did you hear about the, uh, did you hear about the poor show that's going up against Star Wars? Alvin and the Chipmunks is coming out the same week in Star Wars is. <laughs> Everybody on the internet's like, oh, why would they do that? It's such stupid marketing. And I'm like, I think it's pretty clever marketing. I think they know their movie sucks. <laughs> and I think they also know that it's a kid's movie, like a well-identifiable, like, oh, look, cartoon chipmunks, <laughs> right? It's pretty easy for people who don't know to be like, oh, that's a kid's movie. Right. So say you take your kid to Star Wars, you're kind of an idiot, you don't realize that Star Wars is what it is, you get there, it's sold out, and you're like, well, I'll take us, well, let's go see the chipmunks instead, kids, you know, because you don't want to disappoint them. So I think they're banking off of um, Spillover. Because right, I, I think they know their movie sucks. It wouldn't make it any other way. And it's one of those things where it can be ready for Christmas. You know, because by Christmas, yeah. everyone's going to see Star Wars at least twice. <laughs> you know, most people anyway. And so they'll be like, okay, they're just going to like release it, get some positive feedback, hopefully, for them. And then be like, okay, it's Christmas. You're tired of seeing your family. You need an excuse to take the kids away so you can get away from your in-laws. What do you do? You go see Alvin the Chipmunks. I, I I think they expect it to suck, and it'll be in the theater <laughs> for like three weeks, and they'll take it down as soon as they can, and then start trying to sell merchandise. It's cr it's crazy that Alvin the Chipmunks has been around as long as it has been. You know it, or that it is even semi successful. Like that, it it was a novel thing, and the gags like well, the cartoon totally was pretty funny. Yeah, but it totally wore out the gag like a long time ago. 19... Wow. Started in 1958. Yeah. I knew it was very old. <laughs> I didn't know it was that old. Holy hell. Yeah, it just doesn't work. It's like Dennis the Menace. Like just something should be left where they were. They're better They're better as an example of a, as a time capsule than they are. It's like trying to bring the Animaniacs back. It's like you couldn't do it. You couldn't it's like do it. Don't do it. Like the social justice warriors wouldn't let you, and and if you did try to get past the social justice warriors, you'd have to be like South Park. And if you did South, you know, an animated South, Park, it would just there's no way. It had to be in a certain time, in a certain place in the culture, and the you know, yeah, yeah, in the existence of time. Like leave it there. Now, if you want another great old old cartoon, pull out some Rocky and Bullwinkle. Yeah, it's okay. Oh, it's so good. You're so. Have wrong. you tried to go back and watch like Pinky and the Brain? Oh yeah, some of it's really good. Some of it's old though. Some of it's kind of like dated. You're like, huh? Well, it's not what I remember. Well, the thing about like, especially when they were still part of Animaniacs, is there were tons of pop culture references that if you weren't yeah. like really understanding what's going on, right? You know, like. I mean, they definitely made some Monica Lewinsky jokes in the Animaniacs, okay? Animaniacs was that way, though. It was. And it was weird. They were, like, very topical for, like, five years ago. 
which was back in the 90s. It was like they made it in like 98 and it was like making jokes about like 93. Yeah. It was a really weird thing. <laughs> but we well, also got to remember things good. didn't change as quickly in the 90s as they do now. They didn't though. I mean, they didn't. We can go from one crisis to another in a week, you know. Lots of crises lately too. It's really. It's like a virus. It's like snow crash. You ever read that book? Yeah. Ugh. Feels like snow crash. Uh, part of me wonders if it's just we're hearing about more of them. Yeah, that too. I like to believe in Dresden and the fact that the uh, <laughs> the outsiders are, getting, are yeah, the things strings. are getting crazy. Yeah, things are getting crazy. <laughs> Destabilizing the world. Right, the veil between the uh, the never never is getting thin, so the new viruses and the things are coming from the dark side easier. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> You can tell I've been reading through the Dresden Files again. <laughs> yeah. I'm, I'm slowly working through it. Slow, slow. I've read... Um, so I I just finished like two weeks ago or whatever it was when we did the podcast with the uh, Dresden File podcast. Mm-hmm. I had just finished uh, Ghost Story. Right. And then I listened to Stormfront, the Luke Guru, which... Um, Full Moon. Full Moon. And I'm at the end of uh, Grave Peril. Nice. So <sighs> I've gone through. I kind of I've kind of like binge read them again. But you know, the first two are like 14 hours put together. Like the first two aren't very long at all. No, they're not very. They're long. almost like short stories compared to like Skin Game. <sighs> it's really weird. Well, you get you know as you become a better writer, it's easier and easier to write. You know, especially because by the by the fifteenth book in the series, because uh, you know, butcher doesn't tie up a lot of ends. He just lets. No, it, he he's doesn't. just like, I'm going to play with you, you and you and you today. Yeah, yeah. I saw this great quote about writing. It's like, uh, writer's block is when your imaginary friends won't come out and play. It's huh. <laughs> like, ah, oh, I can get that. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh. Yeah. The aeronauts book. Was a goddamn novel. Oh. I felt like reading War and Peace going through that thing. I was like, "Oh, will it ever end?" He just keeps telling more. It's like this more. thick, dude. I mean, I I got it for my wife. Like the day it came out, like I just got it for her, you know, just a gift, you know, uh-huh. to surprise her. I picked that thing up. I'm like, this is a murder weapon. You could do some damage with this. He thing. he explains so much and opens all these different like intricate details and ends and stuff that you're like. This has to end soon, and it's just going to be like a trilogy or some sort. You know, like there's no way that he's going. And then he ties them all up, and in a way that you're like, oh, okay. So it was just one big, giant, cohesive story, and it's going to come to an end. And that was a fun little experience, a little glimpse into this universe. And it all ends, and then he leaves it like untied. Like just like you know, is that where, right where they should go together and tie, they just kind of keep going past each other. And you're like, what? No, what? No, 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 stop, 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 stop. Just stop writing. Stop. I don't. What? This is a whole universe that you're gonna take me through. This is a whole. It wasn't just the story of how the war starts. This is the story of the war. Oh no. Oh no. This is. I'm in for another ten, twelve year like. Shit. So I think like, it's you know, always so supposed to be five bucks. I think he said like, it's going to be five bucks. It's going to be like 15 years before I know what happens to that <laughs> goddamn cat. This is bullshit. <laughs> I didn't realize I was getting sucked into that. Like, Damn it. But it's so good. I might like it better than Dresden. Like, I like that world. But I'm a real big fan. You know, I'm a Rennie. Like, I love going to Renaissance festivals. And yeah, that, kind of thing. that so, steampunky. That steampunky kind of ethereal magic. I was like, ooh. You kind of put magic into like a steampunk energy thing. Some this is cool. Yeah, I really like it. I don't know. I think I will have a hard time classifying it. At least what I've read so far as steampunk. Like it, there's maybe some elements, but it really isn't like in the vision that I see like steampunk. Besides maybe like some of the clothing, but like it's definitely not like mechanical punk. Yeah, it's more energy and the crystals and. But it is. Still very much in that same vein. Sort of the it's like Victorian Victorian Yeah, that kind of idea. And I and in my head, like their ethereal crystal like gauntlet that they use is still worked in brass and has you know, it still looks like it was made by somebody by hand in a right, right. steam shop and it mm-hmm. and I have this feeling that they use steam power to generate their electricity. You know what I mean? Like I have this feeling that it's not just all 
ethereal energy crystals. They just they still do or burn. They still are using stove, wood burning stoves, and you know that that kind of. To me, when they walk around in the the world, it's cobblestone bricks and cedar posts and heavy brass instruments. Like when you go into like the guy's um, laboratory, oh, it's. Whoa, whoa. Am I losing you? No, 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 no. I, you're, I'm not there yet. Oh no, I was just gonna say like the instruments and thing. I don't even know if he has a lab. Uh, I was just making oh, it up. Okay. Just this, this idea. Sorry, that, like, I thought you were talking about explaining what no. it seems like. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. But like the idea that they would be brass instruments, you know, like the telescope or the microscope. If there was anything like that in somebody's lab, it would be very like Leonardo da Vinci style. You know what I mean? Right. From an old, yeah. In my head, it's got that feeling, but it's definitely not steampunk. Steampunk, like you would think of, like uh, with the actual gears and the guy walking around with like a wood stove on his back to power his laser pistol. You know, where they've got like a stack above them as they walk around. Right. Yeah. Well, you also got to remember coming into this series is he's been a professional writer for twenty years instead of you know just mm -hmm. figuring shit out. You know. No, he he's is got the not entire support fucking. system behind yeah. him now. Yeah, this book was not fucking around. This book was awesome from the very minute. From the, yeah, paints a great, beautiful picture. He does the characters well. He sets them up into like situations. You're like, how's that gonna get up? And then you're like, oh, there it is. That's how. <laughs> that's. I would have never seen that coming. That's crazy. Yeah, I heard somebody make the uh, the uh, assessment that you know about Rao, right? The cat. Yeah, yeah, I've met Rao. That like yeah, the mm -hmm. the talking cats. That it's a descendant from mouse. And that we're in like a like, you know, four thousand years in the future, and things have gone different or whatever. <laughs> things have changed so much that that it's a descendant. I was like, that's such a cool like. It's not, but it's a cool idea. <laughs> that's just not how it would work in that universe. But the cat, I love the cat. You'll love the cat. <laughs> it gets cooler and cooler. So, want to hear hear something interesting? Yeah. The. Uh... So it looks like the digital is going to win because I was reading this thing out of the Hollywood Reporter. Digital advertising will surpass television advertising next year. Damn. I don't think they'll go back the other way either. Does that, that, does that signal the end of television? Like uh, the lines that we all have been seeing happening anyway? Well, yeah. I mean, uh, TV ad sales will fall 1% in 2015 to $193 billion. That's a lot. It's a lot. It'll still take a while, but you'll st I think you'll start to see uh, a lot of more fragmenting. You mm -hmm. know, like, you know, things like HBO Go or H HBO Now and you know, just a la carte and shit. So I just thought that was really interesting that it's, it's, it happens so quick. Right. You know, it went from like not like TV execs going, you know, just basically scoffing at people like you and me to go like, holy shit, we're in trouble. Yeah. Didn't take long. Didn't. Well, yeah. It's just you're getting to the point where kids coming out of school have only had Netflix, Hulu, and YouTube. That's all they need, you know. They don't really feel the need to go get a cable subscription. If they have all of that, even. If they have all that, even, you know. Yeah. So I thought that was interesting, for sure. Um, oh, what do you recommend for us today? Um, I got two. All right. One for the general listening audience. Okay. Going into this holiday season. And it was in light of last week's revelation from you about your friend. Okay. And I guess a little bit this week from your brother, but I feel kind of awkward now. <laughs> but it was just spend some time with your family and your friends and try to like, you know, go over why you haven't hung out with some of your friends lately or why you haven't, you know, like maybe why you cut those people out of your life, you know, kind of reexamine and be like, is it worth another shot? Like, was it good enough? You know, like, mm -hmm. and spend some time if the people who you do like and you do cherish, you know, do what you can this next few weeks i guess i was just you know that right and then all for my nerds that are listening on a completely different axis doesn't have anything to do with that at all i found a uh, youtube channel well i found number file a long time ago and it's these 
guys from like this um like Cambridge, you know, like from England, right, you know, right. whatever. Uh-huh. And this guy interviews him about paradoxes in math or like the holes in math or why is the number 7 important or why is the number 3 important or explain pi, you know, right. you know explain these things and they they do their best in a really fun and cool educating way, you know. They can explain to you why two infinities aren't the same. Right. Mm-hmm. Right, you know, that kind of thing. Well, it turns out that they have like a sister channel called Computerphile. And it is awesome if you're a nerd. <laughs> it's, there, he's talking about like the complexities of like uh, AI. You know, like the uh, stamp collecting machine. Like if you had this machine that was like its total system was to make itself better so it could collect stamps, you know, better and then get better and collect stamps better. And it's this whole thing about, you know, Anyway, you'd have to listen to him explain it because I'm not fucking smart enough. I could barely understand what he was saying as he was saying it, but I can't really like reverberate it back. But it is a lot, a lot of fun to listen to. Um, he talks about one why um, the ones that I were listening to, just because I'm kind of like into this stuff, is the general AI problem. Like if they make a general artificial intelligence that can make itself better, that there's the potential for the, the intelligence explosion. Right, and everybody's like, "Well, why couldn't you unplug it?" And he goes over why that wouldn't work, you know, and he goes over um, why you can't have the three laws of robotics, you know, like these just like all of these different things that you're like, oh, and it's just high-minded, real-world, cutting edge, you know, like this is the the cutting edge of what people are thinking about in this universe or in that in that little pocket of the universe, you know, and it's just done in a professional. They've all got cool accents. I mean, come on. Who doesn't want to listen to some English guy make you feel smart? So, those two things. Spend some time with your family and get your, ger- and get your nerd on. <laughs> Computer file. You know, like C-O-M-P-U-T-E-R-P-H-I-L-E. Computer file. Mm-hmm. Like, a, like an audio file. Now, if I remember right, the number file guys are the guys who printed out pi to a million digits. Those yeah, those? they've yeah. done all kinds yeah. of cool things. Okay. And they, they they use like really big brown like paper sack paper that's on a roller. Yeah. And he can roll it across his table and he draws with a magic marker and like actually draws out things, you know, and in mm-hmm. such a way that you're like, why didn't my teacher do that? Like I completely understand what pie is when you fucking drew it out in a like they they have blackboards. Like how hard is this to God damn it, if you teach math, watch those videos and Teach what that guy teaches. You could get a whole lot more across in just eight minutes. Well, that's the same Fuck. thing with like um, extra history. It's from the extra card guys. I'm pretty sure I've talked about it on this podcast before, but they have all these like YouTube series on. Like, they're animated about different things in history, like right. feudal Japan and mm-hmm. see you know Caesar and ancient Rome and. The uh, East and India Trading on. Company, and yeah, and just really cool stuff. And like, I learned more in twelve minutes. <laughs> like, <laughs> it sticks in my head, you know. So, hey, dude. <laughs> in my car. Yeah, it's a lot. Yeah. Yeah. Constant. No. See. Yeah. No. Anyway. Yeah. So. Yeah. I don't know. Now. Schooling. That's something that's probably going to change soon. Oh, yeah. Yeah, yeah. We're good. No worries. No worries. <laughs> no one needs to know. That was smooth. Just don't watch the videos. Anyway. Um, yeah, it's really weird how they do that. Um, there's another one called Hardcore History with uh, Dan Carlin where mm-hmm. he tells you know stories of over history and it's like, why don't they make... Like, why isn't teaching done... Like, I don't understand, like, but I mean, I guess it is, you are listening to professors from Cambridge. Like, it's, they are some of the smartest people in the field at one of the best schools in the world. You know what I mean? Like, it's like, of course. They're they're not a third grade teacher in rural Texas. Right. Of course they're elegant. (laughs) Of course they know exactly what they're talking about. Well, especially because they spent their entire life studying this one thing or these, like, two things. They know every inch of it, you know. Of course, you know, but there's that. But but I can watch it, so there is that, too. 
Mm-hmm. Like maybe a modern day teacher should be like, "Hey, Jim, hey class, watch this video." You know what I mean? <laughs> like, maybe that's what they should be like, DJs, BJs. That's like when I, I when I fell in love with history for the first time is when I got a teacher who understood to tell the story of history and not just the facts. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Because it's great intrigue. Some of it can be just fantastic intrigue. Oh, way better than like Game of Thrones or anything. Oh, yeah. yeah. Way, way better than, yeah. It's like, this can't be real. What happened? Yeah, there reality is always God. stranger than fiction. <laughs> and some of the coincidences and some of the weird things that happened in history are like, that's not true. Like, this, 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 ha- it makes you feel like you're living in a TV show. Like, this has to be the Truman Show. Like, somebody's put this in here for me to read to go, Huh. Yeah, that's not real. That's crazy <laughs> enough. That's not real. I'm supposed to be like paying attention. This is too unbelievable. That's but it I, happens. That's how I happens felt today with my little brother. I'm like, he got married? What? He went to fuck? jail? <laughs> what? That's true. Yeah, but don't you feel like that sometimes? Like you're living in a TV show? Like when um, Anthony Weiner got in trouble for sending pictures of his wiener? It's like, come on. <laughs> that's worse than a South South Park wouldn't even do that. Like that's not that's like that's hacky. Come on, universe. That's hacky. You know what I mean? Like there's a part of you that's like this universe is too crazy. For it's too sure. strange. It's too too blatantly in your face strange, right? It's right. like some some higher power is going, look, 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 pay attention. Look, it's funny. Wiener. Wiener. It's funny, right? Like, Wiener, come on. Dick pic. Wiener, yeah. Dick pic. Yeah, so, I don't know. It feels like we're living in an artificial intelligence program or a weird movie. <laughs> we're just a TV show for, like, aliens. What was that, like, uh, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Universe? No, Hitchhiker's Guide to the Galaxy, they weren't a TV show. They were just in the way of the highway. Right, but wasn't there planets that had, like, that were just TV shows for other planets? Like I think he makes that joke somewhere. Maybe if I I don't know I know there was a joke like that in South Park about maybe that her. was it maybe it was South Park or the Simpsons they did it. Simpsons did it all first. Simpsons did it all. <laughs> so you got any uh, interesting tidbits of triviality? Uh, yes, it's not really uh, trivia knowledge. But since people misuse Whatever. this word all the time, I'm going to, okay. s- and it bugs it bugs the shit out of me. One of my friends. So this is this isn't Jacob's trivia net section. This is Jacob's soapbox section. Yes. Awesome. Okay. We should have a soapbox. Section and the reason Jacob. this comes up is <laughs> I like a friend of mine texted me right before he came on. Is like, oh, CNN is calling Trump a fascist. And I texted back, one day they'll use the word fascist correctly. He's like, I know he's not even wearing a brown shirt. I'm like, you fucking moron. Fascists weren't Nazis. They weren't Germans. They were the Italians. Fascism and national socialism, that's why, or national socialists, that's why most people in America won't use it because they say, you know, it's social, you know, the socialism kind of aspect. But it was a completely different type of socialism. It was a, it it was as different from national socialism as it was from communism, you know. They were basically the 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 holy trinity of social socialism, each each on one end. Communism was everything owned by the people. Um, liberal uh, national socialism was a very strong national patriotic sense where the government controlled everything. Fascism is where the government ran the country but still allowed private business to operate under their control it's different read a fucking book look it up in the fucking dictionary stop using it incorrectly this is one of those examples where the the english language being alive and being malleable where words can kind of change what they mean and they're not you know it's not so concrete this is one of those examples where it's not a good thing Right, because cause people were like, oh, Bush was a fascist. I'm like, no, he wasn't. He was a hawk, but not he really a fascist. He was a hawk, but, not but he a wasn't a fascist. Trump yeah. is not a fascist. 
What is he doing? Is he racist? Well, no. I think he's the biggest troll on that has ever existed, ever. He, he very well could be. This is but he's gonna is, go walk a walk a walk at some point, drop mic and walk off. Right, but like he's he did say, and I'm not defending Trump in any way, shape, form, fashion. Don't get, don't. But his entire comment was, "We should limit Muslims." You should ban all Muslims from entering the country until we get a better screening process. Uh, yeah, you know, and everyone's like, nah, "He's a troll." He's a troll. <laughs> oh yeah, he, yeah, he's he, a troll. But, yeah. So he but, yeah, he's learn your history. That's all I'm saying. Go and read uh, something, anything, <laughs> and don't read Wikipedia because it is more on, you know the new version of fascism but fascism is a is a form of socialism it's akin to communism um but it's not it's not there because it's not um uh, there's still there's still tiers of people instead of you know communism where everyone's supposed to be equal even though uh you know some people the great the and some people don't well the great uh orwell quote you know everyone is equal but some are more equal than others more equal than others, exactly. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Well, you know, we're at our hour, so if you want to call tonight, we can definitely do that. If you want to keep going, we can definitely do that too. What do you want to do, Jake? Okay, I want to just real quick maybe talk about this, like, r this Ronda Rousey, like, interview where she's saying she won't Ooh. be able to eat an apple for yeah. three to six months because she got kicked so hard like i saw the kick and it was brutal but holy god she unseated like see unseated like six teeth ufc fighter i don't understand i read the interview it's like damn see i went ahead like actually read the whole th did you actually go to espn and read the yeah whole thing? i did yeah. like wow okay and here's the thing i don't get i mean granted when she's in the ring she's not that cute but outside of the ring gorgeous and all the people are like, oh, she doesn't look like a girl. I'm like, she definitely looks like a girl. Have you seen her in a dress? She definitely looks like a girl. She's just strong. <laughs> like, She's intimidating. You know, it, it's the neck and the shoulders. You know, it's just all so solid and big. It's like, you know. But, yeah, you put her in the right dress, she's pretty sexy. Like, <laughs> But I've always loved super strong women. It's like, give me a well-toned, strong woman, and I'm done. Yeah, I didn't realize that kick was so devastating. Like, I didn't realize. I didn't realize she got hospitalized. You know, like that's because normally it doesn't. Her, it didn't say she actually. It broke didn't her break jaw, her jaw. But it really. I don't know how. I don't understand. How do you? How do you unseat teeth? That seems like a violence. They basically thing. pull. It's it's basically so the like piece, like it was there, and she just kind of slid them. Well, may, okay, so you're, you're, your teeth in her gum. seat like this. Mm -hmm. It basically imagine a strain, but in your, like like a, a muscle pull, but in your teeth so was like, oh. but they're still connected. This could be the end of Rhonda. It could be. Isn't that weird that you have like what we perceive as these invincible, untouchable like phenoms of the sport, like the gods of the sport, like Anderson Silva or. Ronda Rousey, and then it's just like this one person comes along and it, that has their number, and then all of a sudden you're like, oh yeah, we all like kind of, it's like the emperor isn't wearing any clothes, and we all realize it. And we're like, oh, of course they weren't the best ever. Like, no one could be the best ever. That's just not a thing, you know. Like we all like kind of collectively snap out of it, and a lot of people start going, I knew better. I knew. No, you didn't. Well, Everybody and their fucking mom knew Ronda was going to win that night. I, I, I have a. So a college football related theory, right? So when you're the big man on campus, you know, the big team or whatever, everyone's gunning for you. Mm -hmm. Everyone is preparing for you a little bit, right? Right. Yeah. But when you're the big one, you have to prepare for everybody at one, you know, one at a time. And so you have this team that's way down on your schedule that's been watching you mm -hmm. for six months. Only you. Oh, or or most, you know, a lot of yeah. you, you know, a lot yeah. more of you than you've than watched you of them. them. And they show up and you just find that one one weakness. Cuz you know, she's she says she wants a rematch as soon as as soon as she possibly can. 
She's going to get fucking beat again, dude. I don't know. If she, like, I think, I think there's, you, she might like, I wouldn't be surprised if she changes how she fights, you know, like, uh, was that Rocky three where, he, you know, he changes how he fights. I could see that happening. To me, this is another example of that simulation theory coming through in the universe. Her life is too close to Rocky. <laughs> it's way too close. You know, she's miserable, works too hard to get her, you know, when she finally gets it, she gets rich and she gets soft. She's the champ. She's doing movies. She's, you know, she even went into the fight thick. You know, like you could see it when she moved. She was jiggly and the, her, her opponent's the Russian fucking breaking backs and like, you know, just was cut and, you know, badass. And it's like, Okay, so now Rhonda has to go live in the mountains and beat up sides of beef and climb up snowy hills for a month and become reconnected with who she actually is and quit those movies and get a drive to actually be the champion and she's going to come back and it's going to be the greatest redemption story in the UFC history. It's like, yeah, this is another example of a simulation universe. What a... That, it's not real. That can't be real. Her life is too close to a fucking movie. I did... I did almost take a flyer on that match because it was the odds were so long against home. Like, cause it was yeah. like a thousand to one. Did or, you hear, did you see the people that I think it was 12 to one hundred bucks got you 1200. Okay. It but was did, still did pretty you, high, but did you see that the people were parlaying it with the other, um, the other, uh, there was a, um, college football game where the odds were just wrong. You know, the spread was like the right spread, but the odds were wrong or something. There right. Like way, there's like, they were like, no, that's not going to work out that way. You know, everybody could kind of tell. Like, it was a long shot, but it was, the margins were too close. So people who were smart with their money just took like $1,000 and parlayed the fight, which had such ridiculous odds with the football game that had ridiculous odds on top of a parlay and just cleaned out Vegas, man. <laughs> cleaned them out. Those yeah. poor guys. I, well, I did not, not poor guys. That's, yeah. <laughs> that's not true. <laughs> they're not poor and they're not poor in the other way. <laughs> Fuck them both. <laughs> Screw you guys. I'm going home. I'm going home. <laughs> Gonna make my own heaven with blackjack and hookers. You know what? Screw the hook. Screw the blackjack. <laughs> that's such a great show. Great show. Go watch Futurama. Let's go watch yeah. Futurama. Just stay away from the dog episode. So good. So good. Did you see Beijing? Oh, yeah, like the smog alert or whatever. They actually had to shut it down. Like, completely. Schools closed. Businesses closed. All non, you know, essential, like, travel stopped. Like, red light. Like, the whole city. Stop. It's like, wow. It's like... So it pisses me off. He was like, oh, you know, U.S. is so bad. But look, look at China. We don't have any factories doing that. I mean, yeah, there was a time where we really did need some environmental improvement. But I think we've done a pretty good job for the most part. If we compare ourselves to that, yeah, for sure. Do you see the guy that walked around in China for 100 days with a vacuum? No. An artist in you know, China just took a vacuum and he walks around and he just vacuums the air for 100 days. And then took all of the stuff that he vacuumed up and made it into a brick. And it's like a big kilo size, like, you know, big, thick. It's crazy. Ugh. Poor China people. I'm sorry. Ooh, that was really probably close to a racial slur. I, sh racial slur. I was not trying to do that. My bad. Eh. <laughs> I think you're just talking about the, you know, well, I don't know. The people from the China. Here, I'll uh, I'll link you the. But anyway, anyway, we're finishing strong. We did. We were doing so well. <laughs> <sighs> well, you want to call it there, Jake? Yeah, sure. Why not? All right, man. I'm getting tired, and I got shit on my mind, dude. I'm so anxious. I can tell this isn't my best podcast. So, but whatever. <laughs> it's real. It's raw. It's and we something. Love you have a good day, night, morning, evening, breakfast, lunch, dinner, supper. Two Why are you throwing foods in there? Depending, it, depending good morning, good on if you're a college student, hopefully, hopefully you survive finals week. Yeah. 
<laughs> anyway, y'all have a good night, and we will see you next week. Bye. Ladies and gentlemen, welcome back. This is take two because something was screwed up. But anyway, welcome back to the 42 Podcast, <laughs> where as always, we're talking about the failings of the late, great human race. How are you doing today, buddy? I'm awesome, J-Hope. How are you? Oh, I've got... It's been... A... Anyone who has listened to this podcast knows it's been a hard year for Jacob. Yeah, you're kind of crazy, man. And this week has not been any exception. So me and my wife were out you know, having, having a early dinner and, mm -hmm. you know, my mom or my wife sex, my mom trying to figure out who we have in our like secret Santa that we have because my family's really big. I have five brothers, you know, and now there's two sister-in-laws in there. So there's a lot of people get gifts for. So we just draw names. And Is it mom, above 20? Sorry. To interrupt well, you. no, it's just in the kid. So it's right now it's eight. And we'll soon be nine. So eventually, maybe it'll be 12. Um, Damn. Yeah. But, you know, this way I don't have to buy a gift for all of my brothers and no one's feelings get hurt, you know? Right. And so we're... we're oh, at, yeah, yeah. That makes sense. Okay. Yeah. It's so, way more financial. Yeah. Everybody yeah, gets it, one cool gift. Right. And, you know, this instead way instead of, like, of spending... Because you, yeah, you could spend $300, $400 if you buy all of them like a $20, you know, $40 gift or whatever. Right, which isn't even that great anymore nowadays. No, so we're so we're trying to figure it out, and we, I have a screw up brother that I don't know. Maybe every to, family has one. Everyone has one. So we're and so my mom's like, I haven't heard from him in a while, and that always puts off the radar. It, <laughs> you know, he's such a screw up. That I have a Google alert that has his name with dead beside it, like legit. <laughs> You can do that? Yeah. Oh, yeah. You can You're set up any phrase on a Google alert. And if Google finds it, it'll send you an email and send you the link. Wow. Yeah. It's yeah. It's very, very handy for stuff. So if you're looking for st like particular stories or like, shut up. <laughs> <laughs> you You'd know. make a great dad. I know. <laughs> but yeah, so that's, that's what we're doing. And <laughs> I'm just tired. <laughs> I'm so tired. <laughs> Why is that? I just it's just been everything's been happening and it's been oh, emotionally. Yeah, well, and that takes a toll on you physically and everything else. I'm just like I, <sighs> I don't I just don't want this to happen anymore. Yeah. So so in the week in a week cuz remember last week I told you about I learned my friend died. So in yes. a week I learned that my friend dies. My little brother gets, I learned that my little brother gets arrested and is facing serious jail time. And he also gets married to another, I mean, uh, my wife managed to dig up some pictures. I mean, you could tell that meth is a hell of a drug. She went from kind of plump, very fair skin to pretty thin and pretty nasty skin in like 18 months. Like, wow, real bad. Yeah, it's like, ooh, meth is a hell of a drug. Don't ever do meth, kids. Don't ever do. What meth. They say, don't ever do it. If you're gonna do it, do the clean version. Do um, Adderall. Yeah, because you know meth has like Drano in it. Do you, Do you want to go drink some liquid plumber? Because that's no. basically what you're doing if you're doing meth. Don't do it, kiddos. Please. Yeah, yeah, that's one of the dirtiest drugs. <laughs> Oof. <sighs> So Oof. yeah, it's even weird to talk about that stuff. It's like, ah, uh, you remember, you remember him? He was, he was like three yeah. feet tall, four feet tall when you knew him. You know, no. it's really weird. It's really he weird. He was the age my son is now. Yeah, yeah. Uh, so anyway, not to open on another downer like last week, but apparently that's just all Jacob does anymore. Yeah, that, we're just in that mode. Like I've got, I've got to the point where it's it's laugh to keep from crying. It's just like whatever. Well, sorry to hear that, Jake. No, yeah, well, anyway, so how are you doing, man? I'm all right. Uh, I got stuff going on. I don't really want to talk about it on the podcast, but it's the kind of stuff that makes it where you don't sleep at night. Hmm. I'm just hoping it works out. It's just like, oh, I'll know Friday. But um, I've been having weird dreams and stuff because of it. I've been, I've been having weird like, you know, if you don't really get to good sleep, you're kind of like going in and out, 
Like, you mm-hmm. kind of, you wake up and you're up, but you fall back asleep like your body does before your mind does. And you'll get left in those weird, like, they're half lucid dreams. You know what I mean? Mm-hmm. There's a part of you that kind of knows you're dreaming, and the dreams aren't as real as, like, a normal dream is. They're not as, like, solid. And it's just like a, you get left in those, like, kind of weird limbo states where it's just real confusing and. It'll just be copies and like geometric shapes of like the the last thought you have, you know. And if you're obsessing about something, it's just. Uh, and then they translate because you slip further into the dream, but you become less lucid, so the dreams become more weird. And oh, I had some weird dreams last night, man. But then I don't really remember them all real well. It's just like you wake up with this feeling of like, ooh, just unsettled. I don't want to go back to bed. Yeah, I feel you there. But you're tired, you know. Yep, that's me most nights. Me yeah, most I'm nights. really full of anxiety right now. I don't know, dude. It's weird. It's weird. But I've also got some good news on the horizon. Might be getting a new place to live soon. So Nice. With good internet, which will be nice. <laughs> which will be nice. With a yard so the kids can play and stuff. Nice. Well, you want to talk about something happy? Yeah, Maybe happy, good. depending on how you look at it. Samurai Jack is coming back. Whoa! Part of me really loves this, and part of me really hates it. Because I'm like, what if they screw it up? There's a part of me that's like, did it not end? Did he not beat a coup in the end? I can't remember. And it's like, I don't actually remember. Did I watch the end of Samurai Jack? I think. It and just now with this ended. realization, revelation, Amazon have gotten really cheap. They're marked down from like two hundred dollars, like forty. So think about getting one of those. Awesome. Mm-hmm. I like, thought... We should talk off air. I'm okay. into drones. Yeah, just one oh. of the little ones, you know, just let them fly around and have a little camera on it and shit. Awesome. Yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Those are awesome. It's like training them for the jobs of the future. What are you hoping to get? <sighs> I don't know. At, th- at this point in the year, I'm just like, I'm just watching my watch and watching it click down to 2016. I'm like, come on, come on, come on, 2015's been a shitty year. Come on, get over. <laughs> uh, you know, I here, mean, here, it's, here, it's, here. It's one of those things where, you know, as long as it's funny or kind of cool, I really don't care. Like, if it's a cool t shirt or whatever, because you know, all the stuff I really want. I can't afford neither, much less my siblings or my parents, you know? Yeah. Well, what I did, like, for my parents, because my mom wanted a Christmas list. So, um, have you seen, like, Automatic or Venly? No. They're, um, they're basically to turn your car into a smart car. So, like, you plug them into your uh, OBD2 port. Yes. And they have apps, and it'll... So if your your engine starts throwing a code, it'll automatically tell you what the code is. And since it knows what your car is, it'll tell you what it is, not just what the code is, but common things that cause problems with it. It tracks your mileage and, you know, it'll go over maps and tell you more efficient ways to like get to and from work and all that kind of stuff. The, that sounds cool, Jake. Yeah, the automatic is like 90 bucks. It's so, not bad. The Vinley is 150 and the big difference with the Vinley is it comes with a T-Mobile SIM card. So you can activate the why, why the uh, 4G, so it creates a mobile hotspot. Which, you know, if I had kids, totally Maybe. do it. Yeah. Throw them in the back with an iPad and say, put in your headphones and like certain keywords. Yeah, it's really useful. Anyway, so I... I put, you know, pull out my phone. I'm like, oh, crap. So I punch it in, and I was uh, just punching his name in our hometown. Right. And, and then the second Google was the felony arrest reports in my hometown newspaper. Oh, and no. there's his name. And I'm like, oh, shit. Please don't oh, be him. No. And I kept reading. I was like, there's my old address. Damn it. So two counts of second-degree felony burglary. And one count of felony meth possession. Wow. I mean, it takes, you know, if you're going to commit one crime, only do one at a time. One know? at a time. Uh, so, so he gets arrested on, well, he does, he broke into these two restaurants 
on Thanksgiving night, which I guess is a smart time to do it. You know, no one's going to be there. And then he was arrested on the second. He bonded out yesterday morning and then married the girl he's living with. Cause you know, that's what you do right before you go to jail. As you do. As you do, you know, and it's like if depending on how things go, it's six years. Wow. And granted, luckily it's his first time, but like meth possession in Oklahoma is two to life depending. Wow. Yeah, they don't fuck around in Oklahoma with meth, man. It's nuts. No, they don't. No, they don't. So, yeah, it's been a... <sighs> like, I, we thought about the whole getting married thing today, and I'm, just, I'm just sitting there in my cube at work, like, trying not to laugh my ass off. I'm like, welcome to Mori Povich, everybody. We've hit Mori status. <laughs> so, what are you going to buy him? Like, commissary <laughs> points? Well, I didn't get his name in the... in the. Oh, you didn't? No. Oh, well, whose name did you get? I got my littlest brother. He's 13 now. So Ooh. I'm thinking about getting them because uh, some of the, the drones on Amazon.